Hello, welcome to another video. I'm going to do a series of derivatives, but it will be focused on the inverse trig functions, arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. I think I already did arc sine and I used them um, first principles for one of them. I'm not sure which one, but now what I'm going to do is take each of them that I am yet to do and do it using just basic derivatives and then go back and use the definition of the derivative to find all of them. So this is for arc cosine. My recommendation is, as I move on, if you see something you know you can do, pause the video and do it yourself. If Then check, okay, and then play the video and see if it is the same thing you're doing. So I'm gonna show you the steps you will take to find the derivative of any inverse trig function, including inverse hyperbolic functions. Let's get into the video. So the first thing is to undo the inverse sign because we don't know how to do any algebra with the inverse sign. Okay, so we want to undo this first. We're going to say that let y be equal to arc cosine of x. And you know what this means? It means that if I take the cosine of y, then I can also take the cosine of inverse cosine of x. So you take the cosine of both sides, you still get the same result. Well, we know that the cosine of this, this will undo this and you get x. So you have cosine y is equal to x and that's where you start. So once you know that cosine y equals x, what I recommend is make a triangle to show this information. So you're gonna go here and say, um, I have a triangle, a right triangle, the angle is y, and I know the cosine of this angle is x. Well, by the way, this is x over one, okay? So this is, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is, has to be cosine, that's x over one. And then we find this part using Pythagorean um, theorem, that means is the square of this minus the square of this, you take the square root, so this has to be one minus x squared. So that's what you've got as your triangle. Now we take the derivative of this, using the chain rule, don't forget. And it's implicit differentiation because you'll be taking the derivatives of both sides. So here you have d dx of cosine y will be equal to d dx of x. So if we differentiate cosine, what do we get? We get negative sine. So um, the derivative of cosine is negative sine y, remember that? but you have to multiply by the derivative of y because you're differentiating with respect to x. So it will be times y prime. And if you differentiate this, what do you get? You get one. So you see that y prime will be equal to, what is y prime? Um, we divide both sides by negative sine y. So it's gonna be one over negative sine y. Okay. Now, we can't have y be any of the multiples of pi or zero in this case because that will make this undefined but because we're doing a derivation we don't need to say that yet but at this point this bottom cannot be zero okay but um but we're going to change it that's why we can leave it so what's y prime we said y is this so y prime must be this derivative and it means that our answer y prime which is d the derivative d dx of arc cosine of x will be equal to 1 over negative. Now what is sine y? We can't write y as part of, the, of our answer. Everything has to be in terms of x. You go here. What is sine y? It's opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be this over 1, which is just this. So we're going to write the square root of 1 minus x squared. Perfect. And remember what I said, what you have in the bottom cannot be zero. Therefore, this cannot be zero. And the only reason this would be zero is if this was ever one. And also it cannot be greater than one. X cannot be greater than one because then this would be negative and that means it's not in the domain. So here, the domain of this function actually here is such that you have the absolute value of whatever X you have here must be less than one strictly less than one. 
So you're saying x is between, or you can write it this way, from negative 1 to 1. You do not include the extreme values, okay? This way or this way, and this is your derivative. You see, it doesn't take so many steps. You just need to know what to do. You can do this in less than one minute. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.